Hey guys, welcome to Chaos Theory. My name is Nick Spiriel, and today we're going to be looking at caustics, specifically how to avoid making caustics ourselves and still get caustics within our scenes. Because there's this new product that is called Figment Caustics, and we can use that to project images for from caustics, specifically um, animated uh, caustics, and we can use them in both still renderings and animated and all these cool things. So let's get right to it. Now, the product is actually a, um, affiliated with me. So I do have an affiliate link in the description. So if you want, you can help out my channel by going to the product via that link. Uh, but of course, you're also welcome to just, you know, visit the product and see what they have to offer. Now, there is a free version for the product, uh, which is a bit lower resolution and so on, but where you can try it out and see if it's something for you or not. Um, and that's the one I'm going to use here, just to showcase that we, what we can use it for. So what I'm actually going to do to use this, uh, to use the texture, I'm going to create it in two different ways. One way would be using a standard target spot in 3ds Max, so not an area light, just as a reference if you're using something else than 3ds Max like Blender or whatever. Um, I'm going to put shadows on V-Ray shadows because it is, in fact, I'm using V-Ray for this. Um, and then basically I, all I have to do is load the texture as a projection map. So if I go into Material Editor, you can see I have the texture loaded here. Um, if you don't use V-Ray, you will need to go into Maps, General, Bitmap. Click on the first image. I already have an IFL here, but click Sequence On. As when you do this, it'll load all the images in that folder where you got the free sample. Press Open and make sure that it says Start Frame 0 and End Frame 239, because there is 240 frames in total. Press OK to that. Oh, wait, <laughs> I actually forgot something. So load the bitmap, sorry. Go to the first, go to sequence, make sure it's on, and go to override the gamma for 1.0 instead so that we actually get the correct inverse gamma for this um, for the product itself. Now, the textures are rendered for 240 pictures, but it's 240 at 24 FPS, so that's uh, 24, that's 10 seconds total. However, um, if we if we go for the full 240, it's actually half speed, so it's slow motion if we just play it back in that time frame. So I'm going for 120 instead, and then I'm taking my time slot here in the in the maps and saying playback rate at two, so it's real time instead. If I wanted it slow motion, I could just set my playback rate for one, and it'll loop every 240 instead of 120. Uh, frames. So there's that. All right, so I can load the, the textures over to my uh, projector map on the lamp here, or the light, sorry. I can go into IPR. If I go into my V-Ray camera, we can see that uh, I already have a light, but that's just a default light up here. Um, and after that, I can actually start manipulating my light a little bit. Now there is V-Ray um, IPR isn't too happy about using um, normal lights like I am right now. So it might be a little bit buggy, but just give it a second and it'll work. So if we go here into, sorry, the, uh, there we go. I think if I turn the light on and off or if I hide and unhide it, it should work. All right, we need to obviously turn up the multiplier. If you do get any trouble uh, with it not loading correctly in the IPR, just hide and unhide the light and that should actually work. Um, I've had a few fun trials with that. Now, as we do this, we can obviously see that we get the caustics loaded directly here. I'm using IPR because this won't work directly in the um, in your viewport unless you're doing so. So if we put on normal shading, we actually have to render uh, somehow to actually be able to see it, um, just so you know. I can turn off the V-Ray light we have here and we can look at this spotlight and it's you know, working perfectly well. So we're actually getting projected caustics, which is also animated. So if we, uh, and again, this isn't updating properly. <clears throat> 
but in theory we would be able to see that it actually changes there we go in our viewport in real time well not in real time but it'll change as we change the frame we can also if we don't think the scale is right we can just go into the texture itself because the texture is uh, tileable so we could change the tiling from one to one five to five instead so that we get more or we can have a little bit less by putting up by three by three or something like that so we get a decent amount of tiling and that's basically it if we are using a area light though we can we can delete, delete the light we have and we can go into we can just use the light we already have here turn that on go back to the v-ray camera and then we can load the map from before I'll just load the V-Ray bitmap instead. Um, if you do it with the V-Ray bitmap, just set your color space transfer function to inverse gamma in order to have it at gamma 1.0. And you can set the playback rate on time at the same uh, at the same way as we did before if you want to. Or you can leave it at one and have it in slow motion and it'll be uh, really nice. So now that I've loaded the image, it's actually working right now, but because it's an area light, it'll scatter so much that we can't actually see the projected texture itself. Um, so what we need to do is that we need to take the rectangle disk light directionality and turn that up. When we do so, if I can change this around a little bit, there. So it'll work, but we need to use it as a direction light. As soon as I go like below 0 0.9 something, we won't be able to see the caustics at all. So we will need to have this being used as a directional light and it'll actually work. And we can blur it out a little bit as well in the easy way like this. So it doesn't get as if the distance is longer on the caustics themselves or whatever. And we can just change the size of the light and it'll it'll be perfectly fine but we'll lose the area light properties of it because it gets to be a directional light so you know do whatever you want to make it work um i kind of prefer using the um using the regular lights from um uh, 3ds max in this case so a target spot and then loading the the image to the uh, target spot instead it should still work with v-ray bitmap i'm actually not sure if it does let's try it out Hide, unhide it again. There, yeah, it works fine. And again, fix the tiling. Do so down here, three by three maybe. So something like that. And also if we want, we can mess a little bit more around with this. We can add some atmospheric effects since we were using V-Ray anyway. Uh, so we can add an V-Ray environment fog. Um, change the distance a little bit if I <clears throat> reload this. We can, instead of using all lights, we could just add specifically the spotlight, if I can, there we go. Then we could change the fog distance to maybe 300 or something like that. So it doesn't get to be too much. It's, you know, you see you get the guard rays and everything. It'll even load properly with the texturing being animated and everything. And it's loopable, so that's nice as well. So we get this nice effect. If we want to, obviously you can you know, mess around with the settings of the fog height and everything. Since the new update, um, if, you're not, if you're using a regular V-Ray light, or if we had both lights being affected by the environment fog, which we could just say use all lights. So if we wanted to get just a little bit of that fog getting applied by the V-Ray light, but it's a bit too much still, we could actually go into the options and then say <coughs> effect atmosphere. So the effect atmospherics would be set to a load of lower value like 0.5 or 0.2 or whatever. So it'll still be here. But if we want to, you can also boost it, of course, so we can set that it affects atmospherics by four. So you can change on how much you want to see those atmospherics. Or you can just take it off and you don't need to take it out of the environment fog in here um, like we did before. It's just set to use all lights 
every time, unless the light doesn't have the uh, effect atmospherics on, which is quite nice. So that's a bit easier to maybe uh, control a little bit more. We can change the multiplier a little bit to get some more, um, you know, ocean-like vibes if we want to. We can mess around a bit with the colors. We take the same with the um, actual light we have here. And generally just, you know, mess around with the colors and try and get whatever vibes we kind of want. Right now we're not affecting the atmospherics with this light, so we're not coloring the atmospherics until I put that on and set it to maybe one or two or whatever. And the same with the spotlight. You just mess around with the intensities, different intensities we have. <clears throat> maybe, um, sorry, changing the... Uh, the multiplier from the actual V-ray light and so on. So we get these nice god rays and everything, and it'll work again if it's a little bit too, because the iPad doesn't show this correctly, but you do if you do get a little bit too um, too much pixelating in the texture, just you know tile it a few times more so it'll work a little bit better in in your renders. Because the resolution is basically the one thing that you won't get too much when you're getting the free sample. The free sample is 512 by 512 pixels, whereas the, the actual products themselves, if you buy them, is, I believe, 2K uh, pixels by 2K. Um, so yeah, check out the products. There are a bundle of five textures total on five different kinds of, um, of caustic scenarios, like a pool, ocean, deep ocean, stuff like that. Um, each one of the textures has three products or three different depths to them. So you have shallow, uh, medium, and very deep uh, versions of all of them. Figment are doing a launch offer here uh, together with Black Friday. So if you want to save some money, now is the time. If you think this product is really cool, again, there is a free sample. Go check it out. Use the free sample and maybe, you know, we'll be out of excuses as to why we're not doing more underwater kind of stuff. So yeah, I thought it was really cool and I just really wanted to show it to you guys. So that's it. I will see you later. Bye.